Dear the Purge Anarchy. You take yourself way too friggin' seriously. And it worries me. Your entire premise is based on the idea that roughly 10 years from now, Americans can commit any crime they want for 12 hours once a year. I can think of a couple of states that do that already. And because of that premise alone, why not just Battle Royale that shit? <laughs> Battle Royale is basically an alternative plot to The Purge, as a class of students are thrown onto an island and have to kill each other until only one remains. It embraced the absurdity of its premise, but it still managed to have a rather sincere message about socioeconomics and the threat of overpopulation. But more importantly, it was a rather gratifyingly violent action thriller. Imagine that quote on the poster for The Purge 3. Put it this way. When you think of a film about Americans going batshit crazy and embracing their inner psychopath, you know, the true American way, you would expect to see some creative and horrific stuff, but you show us absolutely nothing. You're not the Hunger Games. So stop being a pussy and show us something. Like this. <laughs> You set up some potentially interesting villains and creepy imagery, but completely wasted. The Warriors opening 20 minutes set up various different and visually dangerous looking gangs, and guess what? They actually use them in the story. The idea of showing us all the various people participating in the Purge is to give them relevance much later in the narrative you could be sustaining tension. For example, the group of inmate looking thugs in the bus visualizes the potential for a chase sequence, and if the film went a little further by reinforcing their threatening presence through either showing or even implying their very sadistic activities, then you could end up keeping the audience on the edge of their seat. Alfred Hitchcock described this with his cinematic tension theory. The premise is that if a bomb goes off and the audience don't know, the impact is sudden and short-lived. But if you were to show the bomb with a 5 minute countdown that the characters didn't know about, the audience become more alert and anxious for the character's safety. Yeah, you do have these guys who reveal to have sabotaged the couple's car, but you blow your load too f***ing early. Like before the film was even released. Like in the trailer. Furthermore, don't be afraid to actually sell the premise to the audience. We know it's ridiculous, but anything can look ridiculous, it all comes down to how you present it. The problem is that the audience aren't emotionally attached to what's going on. We don't understand the impact the purge has. Simply telling us it lowers crime and unemployment is shallow, because there's practically no weight to that statement, and thus we have no reason to care. You don't have to stay true to real world expectations, you just need to make the logic of your own world matter. For example, here's my pitch. Why not take a mockumentary approach due to the genre's manipulation of fiction? You could have easily followed the fine footage genre, but let's be honest, you clearly think you have a bit more class than is actually true. Make a documentary that explores the understanding of the government's decision to have an annual purge. Fake interviews, first-hand experiences using CCTV, reenactments, and even exploit the popularity of the GoPro. Hell, you even use it in one of your shots. The use of different video mediums creates a more intimate and grounded portrayal of the premise, and allows for a more experimental and even anthological approach to the narrative. Film academic writers Corgan and White say that documentaries often question the basic terms of narratives, such as the centrality of characters, the importance of cause and effect chronology, and the necessity of a narrative point of view. Notice how you feel to do every single one of these. So why not simply do a genre that manipulates our understanding of them? For example, The Bay is an investigative mockumentary that uses fine footage to tell the story of a small town that gets invested by a deadly parasite. <laughs> the actual premise is an embarrassment to biology, but they still sold the story pretty well as we began to witness how the investigation developed. The Purge has all these different perspectives to work with, 
Let's see how the homeless survive, how the rich ritualize the purge, the aftermath, and even the resistance groups debate with politicians. The thing you refuse to notice is that you have the workings of a rather creative critique of social class status and the safety valve mechanism, which allows ordinary people to relieve their stresses. But let's face it, you're too clever to actually do anything with that, aren't you? From the marketing perspective of a target audience, you could basically kill two birds with one stone. On the one hand, you could be making a violent thriller for those who want something fearful and exciting, but at the same time be grabbing arthouse crowds who find the discussion just as enjoyable, if not more, than the actual film. And just to end, explain to me why the resistance group is against the purge, yet only attack the rich on purge night when it's legal? Surely that's a contradiction as they're technically participating in the purge.